OK, yeah, gents, so welcome along. Let's start with Marcus Rashford, who is on most, if not all, of the back pages and the front pages of the Sports Supplement. Let's start with the Telegraph. Ten Hag hits out at Rashford. United striker reprimanded for unacceptable night out. Manager consumed 24-7 in curing club slump in form. How much does this make a complex situation more complex? Mark? Yeah, um, it's an interesting take by Ten Hag because... I think unacceptable is a little bit strong. It's probably clumsy by Marcus Rashford, but he didn't break any rules. You know, he wasn't out 40 hours before a game. It was clumsy in the sense that you've just lost the Manchester derby. All eyes are on you. You've not had a great performance. You've not had a great season. So it doesn't look great, the fact that you're out in Manchester a few hours after losing the derby. But it was his birthday and he is allowed to have a life. But I just think it's interesting the way that Ten Hag has chosen to approach this because we know that he's had a, a situation earlier this season with Jaden Sancho when he was his critical, you know, probably publicly critical of Sancho for his, his training behaviour and that didn't go down well. Sancho and, and hasn't played for United since. So by taking on Rashford as well, it's either a very bold move to say, look, I'm the boss and I'm, you know, I'm sticking with my disciplinary streak. Or it's, or it's a it's a reckless gamble which could backfire because you've lost Sancho, you don't want to lose Rashford as well. But equally, it may be a subtle way of Ten Hag trying to get Sancho back in the fold by saying, look, I'm taking on Marcus Rashford, I'm giving the same treatment that I gave you. But I do think that it is heavy-handed on Rashford this because ultimately he didn't break any rules and it's just something that he probably ill-advised rather than, you know, breaking breaking the club rules in terms of when he should be out. And interesting that Ten Hag's quoted as saying that Rashford has trained well in contrast to his comments regarding Jaden Sancho. Stark contrast, we should say. The back page of The Sun. Marcus' birthday bumps. Rash bash. Ten Hag partying after Derby loss. Unacceptable. Mark questions the use of the word unacceptable, Martin. Do you think... A lesser, more generous thing, which is a misreading of the context. It's not about a 26-year-old celebrating their birthday. I think we were all there and had a good time at our 26 birthdays. Was it just about the timing and, and Rashford's form as well? I think, I think I'm in danger of doing a bit of a Roy Keane here. He's not six, is he? You know, he can wait for a birthday party. Um, he has to go out the day of it with the weather wearing hats. Um, it's such a bad look. It feels symptomatic of a club that's forgotten about how it should care. Um, they had nothing on the pitch against Manchester City. That's the derby. I was trying to wrap my brains to whether it was Kevin Ratcliffe or um, Dave Watson from that brilliant Everton team who said, if you lose a derby, stay out of the city, hide away for two weeks, do not be seen, do not go anywhere. Such a basic instruction. Why would you be seen out partying when you have a, a football team that has as many holes in its defence as the, the, as the roofs of the, the stands at Old Trafford at the minute? It's a club with so many problems that you should be keeping your head down. Uh, it feels like there's this massive lack of direction from the boardroom and it feels like that fil keeps filtering onto the pitch. Marcus Rashford is really savvy when it comes to PRs. We've seen in, in really good in, in really good ways as well. Surely somebody around him says, look, you're 26. Let's just put this on the back burner for a couple of weeks. It's a really painful defeat. It's a real... It's another emphasis of just how far Man City are ahead of Man United. Do, do not go out. And it feels like Ten Hag doesn't really have any choice at the minute. Sorry to disagree with him. He has to be seen to be doing some, something because it's, what, eight defeats in 15 games now. There was another punishing defeat to Newcastle. What, what was the effect of Newcastle's reserves? And you're watching how much better Newcastle's team spirit was. Their recruitment has been... And all the while, you know, the, the other thing, if you can look at a real in-depth from that um, League Cup tie, Newcastle have a much better manager than Man United do. He has to be seen to be doing something at the minute that he was brought in to bring a stylistic version of Dutch football. And he, he himself today has said the players can't execute it, which is a, a really dangerous, probably a more dangerous area to go into because that is him saying the players aren't good enough to do what I want them to do. There's, wherever you look, there's just problems. And it says a lot that, the big game coming up for Man United is probably Luton Town at home in a week's time because they have to win that game. We'll go to Fulham at lunchtime uh, on Saturday, a club they've not lost to since 2009, Mark. Back page of the mail as we continue the Ten Hag analysis and reaction. Unacceptable again, the headline, Ten Hag fumes at Rashford for going clubbing after Derby defeat. Star striker apologises for mistake. And the quotes here, again, just to remind people, that Ten Hag did say that Rashford's very motivated to put things right. He's totally with us. Press conference as, as an overall ahead of Fulham. He looked to strike a, a message of unity. What did you make of that press conference and the, the, the tone of it, Mark? Yeah, I mean, I just think that Eric Tanag just falls back on the same approach, you know, discipline, um, unity, and trying to put the message across that everyone's everyone's all happy and everyone's, you know, everyone's training hard. And I don't think he has the uh, 
the charisma of a Jurgen Klopp or a Pep Guardiola to maybe to maybe sell that message. And I think at times it could be a language issue. We don't know, but I, I do think that it does come across as very robotic at times. And if you're watching that as a fan, I don't think you really buy into it very much. I think you feel that it's the same message all the time. But I have to say that the United fans that I speak to, they're they're behind Ten Hag. Majority are they? They they blame the Glazers and they blame the players for the situation they're in right now. So maybe he's he's benefiting from a bit of a soft judgment there because I think some of his tactics and selections have been poor and I think you know some of his his acquisitions have been poor as well but right now he's got the fans on side the majority of the fans but I think I just think the only way he can change the message is by winning football matches and at the moment it has to motivate the players better and find a way to select a better team and put players in the right positions and just you know hope that I mean one thing that struck me against Newcastle was how unfit they look compared to Newcastle the players don't look fit enough now is that because they're getting you know, injuries all the time because they're not fit enough. Or are they simply, you know, not as good as they think they are? Who knows? But the, the performance is not as good as they should be. OK, Mark, uh, let's uh, hold that thought for a second. We'll continue with Manchester United. Those who go to the mirror, no, no, no. Ten Hag blast, unacceptable Rashford for birthday party after Reds derby uh, demolition. But then go, go, go. Formula One chief Wolf keen to be driving force in Ratcliffe's £1.3 billion bid to jumpstart Flat United. Martin, when we asked him on Sky Sports F1 earlier, Toto Wolf said he is a fan of the Premier League and he's a fan of Pep Guardiola in particular. What impact could he make at Manchester United, though? I, th I think in the course of the interview, he does say an actual investment could be some way off. For the meantime, I think J Jim Radcliffe is going to have to be a real driving force to try and turn around the inertia inside that football club. And it's interesting that there's a £245 million development of Old Trafford being announced. It, it's still a case of you look at the new camp and, and um, you, you look at the development going on there and the same at Real Madrid. These are the two main rivals of Man United historically, probably over the last 25 years. This, they're doing ground redevelopments that are going to cost one and a half towards two billion pounds. However, it's a start and it's somebody doing something from the boardroom as against nobody doing anything from the boardroom. Um, so I think he's going to have to be seen to be very hands-on. Whether he gets investment behind him in the future, I think he will need it just because of the wealth that he's taken on in terms of what the rivals have. The, the, you know, Newcastle's fund, which I'm sure we'll go into in the programme, from the Saudi Arabia's public investment fund, dwarfs the, the riches of any other club. So he's going to have to be clever and he's going to have to drive the club. And I know we're talking about, we, we, I've spoken about this program before about the recruitment being poor and the training ground being poor and the ground being poor. That somebody is trying to make a difference and doing something about it, at least as a start. And that, that is what Man United need at the minute. Yeah, Toto Wolf was keen to stress that his £1 billion worth is on paper alone, not cash ready to, to, to charge into Manchester United, Mark. But what do you make of it in terms of the cultural impact that Toto Wolf could have in a similar way that he's had on the Mercedes Formula One team? Could that work? Well, that's the thing. It, it, it's expertise, isn't it? It's a brain trust. And I think, you know, Total Wolf, Dave Brailsford has also been, you know, involved with uh, Jim Radcliffe. It, what United have lacked over the, the Glazer ownership, certainly since Alex Ferguson left, was expertise in key positions right from the top. I think they've had a lot of people that have been, you know, Ed Woodward, Richard Arnold, that are, are not football people. They don't understand the game. They don't understand the people involved in the game. You look at Man City, the people they have compared to United, it's, it's night and day. So I think Total Wolf, Dave Brailsford, while be, they may not be investing money, they, if they invest their expertise and know how to spot the right people to the jobs, you know, these marginal gains, they talk about, well, United did more than marginal gains, they need gains all over the place. But you need somebody to identify the best people to do the jobs. I mean, Dan Ashworth at Newcastle already has transformed the recruitment policy. United haven't got that. That's what they need. They need to find a way to be better off the pitch so they can be better on it.